This is the Axoon M1, and as you can see, we're already using it. This that you're seeing is my Android device. I might have to flip the screen because it's currently showing in <laughs> in reverse. But I think we'll change that in post so it's a little less confusing. I've got all the bits and pieces on. I could probably flick a few more things on there. Mess about a bit here. Oh, there we go. We've changed it. Nice. <laughs> anyway, what we want to be doing is taking a look at this thing, seeing if it's worth it. And yeah, what's the crack really? Because I do have ways of getting my mirrorless feed onto my phone. Oh, I've left the menu up. <laughs> but this apparently offers more I mean for a start you've got all these bits and pieces that's showing up on the screen right now which would be pretty cool to get rid of some of them I suppose like that one <laughs> well this was probably not the best way of starting this video off but hey we like to get things <laughs> going as soon as possible and testing it out so yeah anyway as I was saying I can get my image onto my phone but without all this gubbins which is possibly the whole point of this device i'm gonna have a look at it anyway and see if it will offer me anything maybe it'll offer you more probably will offer you more let's be honest but yeah let's see what's what and how it fares anyway let's crack on <laughs> it's a bit crazy i know That is literally everything. So we've got an instruction manual, USB-C cable, and the device itself, which is what we're really mostly only interested in. So there we go, HDMI, full HDMI, so that's nice. DC out there, which I won't be using that much, to be honest. Type-C USB interface there, little switch there, four indicators there on this side quarter inch screw thread very nice qc passed now you might not know this brand but they are well known in their field so don't just take this for another newbie you know you'll see them in some decent stores too like cvp and the like now this thing only weighs 75 grams you're going to need an app which i'm going to download next it's available for android 8.0 and above apparently they're working on an ios app too it's compatible with phones as wide as 90 mil so 65 that feels okay you know 65 mil to 90 mil it is plastic but it feels decent powered by 550 750 or 970 batteries or as we saw before dc which is not so interesting for me now video input maximum 1080p 60 frames per second and output the same 1080p 60 frames per second so let's see how we get on i'm often trying to get a 4k feed on the go so you know maybe some of my cameras will give me that and others will be very strict to that 1080p limit. Anyway, let's see how we get on with this thing. Set up, very simple, USB-C into your phone, USB-C into the device, then your HDMI in into the device and then the other end into your camera. Next, what we wanna do is get the Axine C on the go, hit monitor, now all being well, once you've allowed it, it doesn't seem to save these settings. There we go. We're in. Pretty cool. So you can see what's on my GX80 over here is on the screen here. There's a little audio monitor going on down there. But at the bottom, you can see some of the functions that are available. But there's a little plus here that lets you select what you want to be there. So we've got grey. We've got RGB. Histogram. Waveforms focus, lookup table, zebra, false color, distort, audio markers, and grids. A lot of options going on in there. Let me just go through a few of them. So when I hit here, we can see it changes immediately. Histogram here, can't move it around, but I can change the size of it. Waveforms over here, same deal with that. 
focusing their lookup tables there. And as you can see, there's more options up here, which is where you can change how things are for you. So you can personalize it a little bit with the markers, the grids, the display, etc. So brightness, all that goodness is in there. And then you can go back here and carry on with the options. So very good. It looks like I was recording, didn't realize I was. And that's save that. The record button is actually there. Now, if you're interested in live streaming, you hit that there and then you carry on with those details right there. But not worried about that at the moment. When we hit the cog at the top, we can set the bit rate. A little tutorial over here. There's a thing about the connection, but I'm not going to worry about that either. That's a little overview of the monitor functions via the app. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. In summary, this is handy if you don't have an external monitor or simply don't have space to carry one on your travels. Now, as it's Android only at the moment, it's obviously limited, but I think the app is decent, especially when it comes to the features you get that you would expect to see on a standalone monitor like waveforms, histograms, zebras, and so on. You can also use it to live stream over RTMP, though that's not something that I do, but it's cool nevertheless. However, let us know if you've used the feature and how you've got on with it your thoughts are also important or more important than mine anyway. Now, I do use my phone as a monitor for much more simple stuff from time to time, and that's just with an OTG cable and a very simple app. But of course, if you need the monitor features, that's where this really comes into its own. Now, it costs about £88 at the moment on Amazon. So as usual, it comes down to whether it would make your life easier or not. Is it something that would be practical for you? Let us know in the comments below. For some, it might be a lifesaver. For others, I guess like myself, not so much. And that's okay. But let us know in the comments below if you've used this and how you feel about it. And until the next time, take it easy.